Now then, this extremely fucking motor in a couple of seconds time will be accelerating because I'll be putting my foot down on the juice pedal. See you later. <laughs> And this racing track is wicked to demonstrate what on earth I'm talking about and put my sweeters on that motor through its paces. Now we know that speed equals distance over time. So what I've got to do to get my speed is measure my time between the distance markers I've located at the side of the track over there. You'll see them as I blast past. If we measure their slope at different points along the graph, we get Andy's speed at those points. If, for example, we want to find out Andy's speed after he's been travelling for 8 seconds, we can simply draw a straight line to the graph at 8 seconds and calculate its slope or gradient. To calculate the gradient, we need to divide the distance by the time. In this case, the distance is 200 metres minus 60 metres, which is 140 metres. Similarly, if we extend the line to the time axis, the time is 11.8 seconds minus 5.8 seconds, which equals 6 seconds. The gradient is therefore 140 metres divided by 6 seconds, which is 23.3 metres per second, and that's 84 kilometres per hour. To get Andy's speed at any other time, we can calculate the gradient at these points in exactly the same way and we end up with a table of speed against time. Now this is where the clever bit comes in. If we plot these points on a speed time graph, speed on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, we can work out acceleration by measuring the gradient of the speed time graph at any point. <laughs> 